So what do we do if we have a function, or actually two functions, that are divided by each other? So these are two functions of x, keep in mind. So you can't just cancel them out. So you've got something like you know some sort of u of x, and you've got some sort of v of x here going on. Okay, you've got two different functions of x here. So what do you do when you can't cancel them out? I mean, you don't panic. You just use this rule called quotient rule. And luckily, you get this on your formula booklet, so you don't have to memorize it. And it goes like this. It says, uh, let's see here, dy dx, which is the derivative, is going to equal, it's going to be v du dx minus u dv dx, all that over v squared. Okay, so that kind of looks ugly, doesn't it? I mean, this is, it looks kind of like a big mess. A lot of students, they look at this, they just want to throw up. Fair enough. But I just want to show you, this is totally doable here. Now you get this on your formula booklet, which is good, and I want to show you maybe a little uh, pro tip here to help you out. So, mm, a way to decipher what to do here, I like to write it like this, I like to say y primed equals, let's see, this is v, instead of saying du dx, I'll say u primed. And then I'll say minus u times dv dx, I'll call that v primed, all that over v squared. I think this one looks a little bit simpler, doesn't it? So that's a, maybe a simpler version here. But the green one is what's on your formula booklet, so you need to be able to start with this and get to this. And again, I like to just do a little shopping trip here, uh, you know, shopping list. I write down u, I write down u primed, I write down v, and I figure out v primed. And once I have those four, I can do everything I need. I just put it together, and well, maybe it's a mess, but I can do it. Let me show you two different examples here. So we've got the first one. Ugh. Notice I can't just cancel out the tops or the bottom, so this is an example of quotient rule, very likely. So I'm going to do it. So I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to use quotient rule, which means y primed is going to be equal to v u primed minus u v primed, all that over v squared. I guess I need to make my list. I need u, I need v, I need u primed, and I need v primed. All right, so if I do u, uh, u is e to the x. What's the derivative of u? It's e to the x also. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. That was easy. Let's do x squared plus 1. That's the bottom part. That's v. Derivative of that is 2 times x, because the 2 comes in front, and this becomes 1 less, so it's just this. Well, that's kind of nice. So then let's go ahead and do the whole thing here. So I've got then that... Uh, I'll call it how they do it. I'll say it's f primed of x. Let's use a proper notation here. Equals, let's see, I gotta do v first. So v is x squared plus one. All that's gonna be times u primed, which is e to the x. All right. Minus u, which is e to the x. Maybe I'll put in brackets like this. Times v primed, which is two x. Okay. All that's divided by v squared, where v was x squared plus 1, so the whole quantity is squared. Uh, I, you could probably be done, but I'm going to show you, you could actually do a little bit more, I think. We could multiply this out. I'll just put the ex in the front here, so e to the x times x squared plus 1 minus, well, I've got e to the x times 2x. Do you notice that? Whoops. i got to actually put it there, 2x. There we go. All that over x squared plus 1 squared. I'm not going to expand the bottom because I wanted to keep that, you know, factorized already. Do you notice I've got an e to the x in both of them? So I can say e to the x. And I can say it's x squared uh, plus 1, uh, whoops, minus 2x. Because I've got a minus here like this. So I could do that because that would, that would give me the same thing. Um, all that's over x squared plus 1 squared. I'm just trying to get it as simplified as I can. Um, can I do anything else? Yeah, I guess I can. I could rewrite this. I could rewrite it as a uh, descending order, so like x squared minus 2x plus 1. All that over x squared plus 1 squared. Now, I could take a look and see if this thing here factors, because this here is a quadratic, so let's just focus on this one right here. I've got a is 1, b is minus 2, c is 1. And I still trick for factoring. I say the product equals ac, which in this case here equals 1 times 1, so that's just 1. And the sum 
has to be, so I have to find two numbers whose product is one and whose sum is just b, which is just minus two. So can I find two numbers who multiply to one and add up to minus two? Uh, well, let's see, I've got one and one. They multiply to one, but they don't add up to that. I've got negative one and negative one. Those also, work. ah, those work. A nice little trick that I like to use for factoring, I always divide by a, I reduce, then I read bottom to top. So this is this thing times x. So it will be x minus one. So that'll be this thing right here. And this one here would also be the same thing, x minus one. Hey, so it was a perfect square. So this is the same thing as this. Uh, okay, so I guess, I mean, if I really wanted it fully factorized, which is kind of annoying, but yes, uh, there it is. So it's just x minus one. Let's see, that was squared. All that over x squared plus one squared. I suppose that's the very best version I can think of. I can't see this canceling out, so I guess I'm done. There we go. Maybe you can think of other things to do, but this is probably good enough. In fact, over here would probably be good enough too. I, it depends on how a question is phrased. If they said, like, make sure you find it in this form, fine. But you notice this, I think you could have probably stopped right here would have been a good place to stop. I mean, I suppose we can make it a little bit prettier in descending order, though. Maybe that one right there was actually just fine. I just put the, you know, x's, x squared, then the x's, and then no x's. So this would have been fine. This is even better, I guess. Let's do another one. I like this one with the faces. This is maybe how you feel after doing all this stuff. <laughs> That's just how I thought of that. Okay, let's do another one of these. So we're going to use this idea again. Remember, y primed equals, let's look it up. It goes v u primed minus u v primed over v squared. Okay, so v u primed minus u v primed over v squared. All right, let's figure out what all the different things are. I've got u, I've got v, I've got u primed, and I've got a v prime to find. u, that's x squared. So u primed must be two times x, because I bring that in front. Okay, what's v? v is x plus one. Derivative of a constant disappears, that's nice. And this is just a one here, it comes in front. It's a one times x to the zero, which is just one. Well, that was actually kind of nice. So let's go ahead and do it then. That means f primed of x, at least. I'll just do it with x's first, then I'll do it with a one after. f primed of x then must be just v times u primed, so v, so that's x plus one, times u primed, which is two x, all right, minus u, so that's x squared, times v primed, which is just one, all that over v squared, v was x plus one, so it's x plus one, quantity squared. Can I do anything else with this? I guess I can expand this. I guess, yeah, so x times 2x is 2x squared uh, plus 2x, I guess, and then minus x squared. All that over x plus 1 squared. Hmm. Can I do anything else? I think I can, yeah, you know what, I can put these together. 2x squared minus 1x squared is just 1x squared. So all right, so I've got f primed of x equals x squared plus 2x, all that over x plus 1 squared. I'm just trying to simplify as much as I can. I guess I can take out an x here. They both have an x I can take out. So I'll pull out an x. Whoa, I don't know what happened there. I can pull out an x from both of them, so I have x plus 2. Do you see that's the same thing as this? I guess that's as far as I can go. I can't think of anything else I can do. So let's say this is good enough for f primed of x. Okay, so if that's f primed of x, let's just uh, put a little circle around that. So f primed of x is this. I want f primed of one. Notice that, so I want this right here. So what do I do then? Well, f primed of one then will be, let's go ahead and do it. I just put in x equals one everywhere. So one times one plus two, all that over one plus one squared. All right, so one plus two is three, so that's gonna be three here. One plus one is two, two squared is four. I guess my answer is three fourths. So I'll write that down. So f primed of one must be equal to three fourths. And I'm done. Phew. Let's see if we could have, uh, let's see if we can actually check this on a calculator. So how could I do that? Uh, maybe I'll graph this one. So I'll do a graph of it. So I'll do a pretty fraction here and I'll say, show me uh, x squared over x plus one. This should, whoa, I made a mistake, haven't I? 
Let's see, what do we expect it to look like? Well, I know for sure there's going to be an asymptote at x equals minus 1 because I can't divide by 0. Let's see what happens here. Whoa, that looks kind of crazy, doesn't it? And what am I going to want? I want the derivative at x equals 1. So I'm going to go menu, analyze, give me dy dx at x equals 1. And what do I hope I get? hope I get 3 fourths, so that should be like 0.75. Oh, God, that's good. See that? So, phew, that worked. Because 3 over 4 is uh, 0.75. See, we were able to do this with a calculator, without a calculator, sorry. Maybe now you feel, <laughs> I mean, these quotient rule ones, honestly, they can be a little bit complicated looking. They can look actually really quite ugly. Uh, so I don't like using quotient rule. I mean, it's not that hard. It's just you end up with just ugly algebra to do. But that's okay. The idea behind it, though, is okay, right? Just do vu primed minus uv primed over v squared, and you got it.